Substance 3D Painter Essentials, a complete beginner tutorial course that will show you everything you need to begin texturing with Substance 3D Painter. And in this video, I wanted to break down what's included in this course and what you will learn. The very first video will cover interface overview. I'll show you all the panels that you need to know about and how the entire Substance Painter is structured. And this will be an overview so you are aware of the entire interface and what some other panels do. Next, we'll dive into viewport navigation and different viewport modes. And this will give you everything you need to know to get started navigating inside Substance 3D Painter, both in 2D views as well as in 3D views, and all the shortcuts you need to speed up this process. Then we'll dive into working with materials and smart materials. There are two types of materials that you end up using in Substance 3D Painter, and these are basic materials, and then there are smart materials. I'll tell you what the differences between the two are and how to use them both. And you'll be using these a lot, especially when you are beginning to texture in Substance 3D Painter. Then you will learn how to create your very first material. And we'll cover the use of empty layers as well as fill layers. Very two important layer types you will be dealing with a lot in Substance Painter. And then we'll go into another very important part of Substance Painter, which is masking. And you'll learn what masks are, how to use them, as well as how to use smart masks. And everything inside Substance Painter relies heavily on masks, meaning that you are going to hide parts of your texture in order to show another type of material on a different part of the mesh. And masking is an essential and a must when you're going to be texturing with Substance Painter. And we'll go through how to create masks and how to use them. Then we'll go into using paintbrushes. And Substance Painter has a very in-depth, very involved paintbrush system that allows you to paint anything you want on top of your meshes using a variety of different channels and a variety of different brushes. And we'll cover all the options and all the settings for paintbrushes you need to know about. Then we'll cover how to create a new project and begin to use your own meshes to import into Substance 3D Painter and how to bake mesh maps which is going to be an important part of telling Substance Painter of how your mesh is constructed so it understands how to texture it. Then we'll texture an oil barrel. We'll import it, we'll bake mesh maps, and then texture it using smart materials, and then texture it by building up our own materials. So this way you'll begin to understand how to do this layer by layer manually rather than use some of the automatic functions in Substance Painter. Then you'll learn how to add your own roughness variations and this will allow you to have a bit of breakup on top of your surface on any mesh that creates that real reflections of how shiny or how rough a surface is and how much of light it absorbs or reflects. And it's one of the most important parts of texturing your meshes is being able to add roughness variation that you see in the real world and translate that into 3D world or 3D meshes. Then you'll learn how to add dirt which is another way to create more variation within the texturing process. And being able to add roughness variation as well as dirt, there are specific steps you need to use to do this successfully so you have full control over what you're doing inside Substance Painter. And it's one of the most commonly asked questions that people want to know how to add roughness variation and how to add dirt. Then we'll cover how to use Polygon Fill, which is a tool that allows you to assign a material to any part of the mesh based on triangles, based on polygons, based on meshes or based on UV chunks or UV shells. And this gives you full control where certain parts of the texture of a material will show up on top of your 3D model. Then we'll cover a few options for display settings that will make your viewport and your 3D view work more accurately so you can texture better. Then we'll jump in and texture another 3D mesh, which is going to be a traffic cone. And we'll begin to use many of the tools we've covered so far, many of the techniques up to this point and texture a traffic cone model. Then you'll learn what texture sets are and how to have multiple material types or multiple texture sets on your model. Then you will learn how to use alphas. And this will allow you to add logos, decals, as well as text onto your meshes, onto your textures. Then we'll go into how to add normal map detail. Very common way to add detail on top of your mesh without having to model it in. And then we'll take everything we learned up to this point and texture a more complex mesh, which is going to be our final mesh with texture, and it's going to be a dumpster. And we'll essentially use many of the techniques we've covered in the course so far and apply it in real time to a more complex 3D mesh. And then we'll finish things up and you'll learn how to render with iRay right inside Substance 3D Painter, which is a ray tracing rendering engine 
that allows you to create renders without having to export your textures and then having to render somewhere else. And it's a quick way to display your models, your textures, without leaving Substance 3D Painter. And then you'll learn how to export your textures so you can bring those textures and apply them inside the game engine, a 3D modeling application, or another rendering engine. And you'll know how to export those textures so you can use them. So the course is complete. You can pick it up right now. There'll be a link included, depending where you're watching this video, so you can get access to the course and begin to learn how to use Substance 3D Painter to texture. And I will see you in the course.